Hey there, everybody. Here we go again with some distance learning. All right. Now make sure that you're checking your Canvas page regularly, that we're gonna be updating some assignments a couple times a week and such, and there's gonna be some quizzes and activities involved, so make sure you're checking this out regularly. Uh, just check out your Canvas page daily. I would get in a routine, you know, stay in a routine of school, all right? Now today, what we're gonna be doing is talking to you about the distributive property. It's one of my favorite properties. It's one of the properties that you're gonna see a lot when you get into algebra. And uh, the biggest thing you need to notice about the distributive property is it's one of the properties that has, well, multiplication in it, as well as it has addition, or this could be subtraction. So it's one of those things where it's one of the properties that has multiple operations. Normally, it's addition all the way through for the property, or it's either multiplication all the way through the property, but this one has both, has multiplication as well as either addition or subtraction, all right? And my, another thing you wanna notice is the parentheses you'll see that it has parentheses in it. Well, one of the first things you'll learn in algebra as well as any other math class is that when you see parentheses, the first thing you wanna do, get rid of them, okay? If you see parentheses, they gotta go. And you might be wondering, well, how do you make them go? How do you get rid of them? Well, it's, it's simple. What you do is you start with the factor that's gonna be on the outside of the parentheses, which in this case, I put an A here just for representative, just to represent it. All right, this A can be anything. It could be a number, it could be a variable, it could be a number with a variable, but typically in eighth and ninth grade, it's a number, all right? An integer, if you will. So what you do is you take the integer out here or the variable, whatever it might be, and you multiply it by what's inside. So what's gonna look like is you maybe wanna make little, little rainbows or something, you know, and just say, hey, that's gonna be A times B. And what that ends up being, well, is this, A times B, which if you remember, when you put nothing between two variables, it means multiplication. Now, let's go back to the A. This one's kind of the leading force here. It's the one in charge. So we go back to this one. And then we also go to the other number, variable, whatever it might be in the parentheses. So now it's gonna be A times C, which would look like this. Remember, nothing between them, it means to multiply. And then don't forget, you either take your plus or your minus and transfer it over to the other side. This is what the distributive property would look like if you look it up in any math book, online, or in such. All right? All right, let's get to the numbers part of it, right? That's what we all care about, it's math, numbers, yeah. But before that, I want you to look up and try to find out there was an 80s rock band. They're actually still performing now today that told you to pour some sugar on them. That's right, there's a rock band that said, pour some sugar on me. Try to figure out what that rock band is, and it's worth extra points, all right? Good luck with your searching. Remember, ask your folks. They probably know what it is. All right, here we go. Numbers and variables and such, this is how we do math. All right, let's start with out here. This is the four, this factor is four. So what we're gonna do is take this factor and we're gonna multiply it by this, okay? So what does that look like? Well, you take the coefficient, three, and you multiply it by the integer four, and you simply get 12. Now the X just kind of goes down and bring it, you know, bring it along with it. Then we go back to our number outside the parentheses, remember this four, the integer, and we multiply it by the other factor, which is a two in this case. So that'd be four times two, which simply is eight. And don't forget to bring down the operation, the other operation, which is plus. And this would be the other side of the distributive property. It's a lot cleaner, easier to work with now. Once you get rid of those parentheses, much better, much better. All right, on to another example. Ah, this time we have a negative factor out here, negative eight. Doesn't change anything. We just simply multiply it by everything inside again. So we start with our negative eight here and we multiply it by X. Well, you might be wondering, you know, just multiply by X, where's the number at? Remember, there's an understood one that is right here. Whenever you have a variable with nothing in front of it, it means one, so it's a one X. So really you're taking the negative eight times the coefficient, which is one, and that would give you a negative eight. And again, the X just kind of comes down, if you will, goes along, if you will. Now, now we're gonna take this negative eight times the two. Well, negative eight times two is negative 16. Or what you could do is imagine this as negative two. And then you take negative eight times negative two, which is a positive 16. So it's either gonna be negative eight 
times negative two, or you're gonna take your negative eight times the two, but then you can have that minus sign also. So it would be a minus a negative 16, which ends up being a plus. Preferably, I think it's easier to say that's negative two. It's a lot faster and easier, but you know. All right, a little bit more difficult. Now we have three things inside the uh, parentheses. So how's that gonna work? Well, we're gonna take this three times the first term which is gonna be three times two, which simply is six, and then the x squared. There we go. And then we're gonna take this three, and we're gonna multiply it by this negative eight. Remember, that's a negative eight, which is gonna give you negative 24, and bring down the x. And then finally, we're gonna take this three times positive four, which simply is positive 12. At this point, you'd be done, because you cannot combine these. Remember, we talked about like terms before. Like terms, you have the same x, same variable, but it has to have the same exponent. In this case, we have a two, and here we have a one. So you cannot combine those. Those are unlike terms. So this is done as is, and it's also in standard form. We have the highest variable has the highest exponent, and then the next one has a, the one, and then the constant goes last. All right, there we go. All right, moving forward. Ooh, now this one just got a little bit more difficult. All right, a lot of some extra stuff over here. Remember, this six is only gonna be attached to the things inside the parentheses. So we're gonna multiply them by the things inside the parentheses. All right, so let's start with our six, which is our integer on the outside. We multiply by two y. Well, six times two y, as you're probably getting the hang of this, is 12 y. Nice. Now we're gonna go back to our six, and multiply it by the second term inside here. I look at that as negative eight. Maybe you wanna look at it as just eight. Well, six times eight is 48, and then bring down the minus or the negative sign. Now, what about this plus four y and the minus two? I haven't done anything with it yet. Well, we are now. We're gonna combine our like terms, just like we learned the other day, right? So we're gonna combine these like terms, meaning we put together the things that look alike. For example, 12 y, and a positive 4y. Both have y's, both to the first power. So then you take your coefficients, 12 and 4, and you can take 12y plus 4y, which simply is 16y. And then, don't forget about our numbers, which are called constants. So you have negative 48 minus 2, okay? Or negative 48 and negative 2. Either way you do that, it's gonna be negative 48 plus a negative two or negative 48 and negative two, and it's gonna be negative 50, all right? Negative 50. All right, hopefully everybody's doing good out there. Hopefully you're staying active and getting out there and still doing some exercising and such. They say one of the best thing you can do is keep exercising your body. Well, this is exercise of your brain. So make sure you're doing these lessons. Uh, get with us. If you have any questions, you can email, you know, you can either email me, Coach McKeever, or you can email Miss Litzinger, Miss Grice, Miss Peel, whoever your teacher is, and just tell them that, you know, you have some issues and you're trying to figure this stuff out and they'll get back to you and answer it as soon as possible. All right. Here's another one. This is a tricky one. A lot of people have a tendency to do eight minus six first, and that's a trick, okay? You always wanna multiply before you subtract. That goes back to our PEMDAS rules or order of operation rules as we know them as. So one thing you wanna do is make sure that you realize this is actually a negative six. So when you, when you uh, multiply, you wanna take this negative six times everything inside here. So negative six times two x is negative 12 x. A common mistake is some people will forget that negative sign or that minus sign, if you will. And then you have to take that negative six times the second term, which negative six times four is gonna be negative 24. Okay, and that's a big deal. Um, this is a negative coefficient. You gotta watch out for that negative there. All right, you gotta watch out for that. I would also bring down the eight and the positive three X. And this is just continuing our work and being nice and organized and such. Now, Combine the like terms, put together the things that look alike. We have a negative 12 X, we got a positive three X, which together, if you add those together, would be negative nine X. And then don't forget about the num numbers here, okay? The constants, the eight and the negative 24. Eight minus 24, okay? Eight minus 24 is gonna be negative 16, or minus 16 as you might like to write it. All right. Here we go. 
Last one, a little bit more daring, okay? Just hit the 10 minute mark, sorry about that. Try to keep these under 10. But uh, this is just such fascinating material, so I wanted to make sure I get it all covered thoroughly. All right, last one, here we go. All right, we take the factor outside and we multiply it by inside. That's gonna be five times two X, which is 10 X. Then we go back to our five, multiply it by Y. It's gonna be positive five Y. Then we go back to our five again, and we multiply it by negative six. That's gonna be negative 30. Don't forget to bring down the other terms. So now we're gonna take this algebraic expression and we're gonna combine it together, all right? So we're taking the things that look alike. So we have a 10X and a minus 10X. Uh-oh, 10X minus 10X minus 10X is zero X. That's right, it is, but don't write it, okay? Just leave it out. So then go on to the five Y and the four Y. Well, five Y and four Y is nine Y. And then what about this negative 30? Negative 30, doesn't have anything else. There's no other constant, no other number. So then what do you do? Simply bring it down. And the constant always goes last. All right, guys, there's your distributive property. Uh, there should be an assignment that goes along with this. Keep checking those Canvas pages and stay safe. This is Coach McKeever, out.